No. What is the one thing that you must know if you're sitting here, if you're watching at home? There are many things about God that we may not know yet, and that's okay. But you have to know at least one thing. I was blind, but now I see. I was lost, but now I am found. I was spiritually dead, enslaved by my sin nature, and my sinful desires had a, bet, had a better of me, but now I'm spiritually alive. I have spiritual strength to withstand my sinful nature and be victorious. This is what we must know. Later, Jesus finds this man and asks him this, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked, tell me so that I may believe in him. Clearly, this man did not know a lot about Jesus Christ. And this is what Jesus Christ says. You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking to you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe and worshiped him. When God reveals himself to you and says, I am God, I am your Savior, you must worship him. Amen? That's why you're sitting here. Are you worshiping him now? Put your, heart, put your hand on your heart right now. As I'm sitting here right now, as I'm sitting in my home, either on my couch on my chair, sitting on the floor? Am I worshiping God? Am I just sitting here? Okay, you could take your hand out. Um, this man, when he knew, one thing I know, I used to be this dead, enslaved person, but now, I know God, and now I will worship God. Now, this is what you must know, and this is the one thing you must do. The second thing that you must know is that you must obey and follow Him. Basically, that's what it means to worship Him. You're worshiping Him, not with the 30 minutes that you're sitting down, but with your life, obeying Him. John 10, 14 says this, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep knows me. Well, as the sheep listens to the voice of the, of the shepherd and follows the shepherd wherever he leads, if the shepherd will lead him off the cliff, the sheep will march down the cliff. We must also listen to the voice of God and follow him. You must know God's voice. Have you ever heard of God's voice? Can you recognize God's voice when He's speaking to your heart? When's the last time God talked to you? When's the last time God, you felt God in your heart and said, hey, that's God. I had moments like that all the time. You know, sometimes I'm talking to somebody, somebody, and it makes me furious, you know, you know making me you know, emotionally disturbed. And then I hear the voice of God. What are you doing? You have so much joy in me. Why are you letting this bother you? This is nothing. This thing at work, this thing with, with the situation, it's nothing. Listen to my voice and follow me. The third thing that we must know is knowledge is nothing if you don't love God. Because why do you have knowledge? So you can love Him better. The knowledge that you are to supplement is to your faith and to your goodness. 1 Corinthians 8 says this, Now about food sacrifice to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. 
If anyone thinks he knows anything, he does not yet know it as he ought to know it. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Amen. This is to confirm Ephesians 3. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ and to know His love that surpasses knowledge. If you have knowledge but you have no love, it's nothing. What you have to know is you have to love. Do you love God? The third thing we have to talk about is how do we know? How do we come to know God? Well, today we're going through a lot of scripture. 17, John 17 says this, Now they know not now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave him the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. Of course, everyone knows this. God gave us his word. How do we know it? Well, we look at the word. We can't make up knowledge about God. Of course, we have to read the word of God. But again, learning about God is not enough. John 5, uh, verses 39 and 40 says this. You study the scripture diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scripture that testify about me. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Studying scripture again gains informational knowledge. But that's not the end in itself. Knowing about God is not the ultimate objective of studying Scripture. We study with God and have fellowship with God. You know, it's like me and my wife. It's not like we got married and so could we got married. That's it. I don't want to see you again. <laughs> you go to your room. I, 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 I live in my room. We'll get together 30 minutes a day to eat some meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. No. Marriage is just the start. Do you think I know more about my wife now than when we first got married? Of course. But that knowledge I didn't get from Facebook, from Insta. No, I got through what? Living and experiencing my wife. Knowledge about God is nothing. You have to love. And you have to love Jesus Christ the way Jesus Christ wants to be loved. So we study the scripture. Lastly, how do we know if we really know? How do you know that you know? First John 2 says this, this is how we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. The one who says, I have come to know him and yet doesn't keep his commands is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Scripture tells us that if we say that we know him, but don't obey him, let sin just trample all over us and just follow our sin nature wherever it leads us, then we are a liar. God is saying, hey, you have no relationship with me. You have never taken a vow with me. Now I explained this before, but I'll explain this again. Because this is critical. If you desire to follow God, if you have committed to obeying God, and on the road with God, you fall, that's okay. You could fall a million times. God will help you up a million and one time. You just have to repent and just walk... As long as you don't let go of Jesus' hand, you're walking 
You fall, you get up. You fall, you repent, and you get up. It's okay. You are not a liar. But if you could care less about having a relationship with God, if you spend the entire day without praying, reading the Word of God, and you're okay with that, you could care less about whether you're hurting God's heart, you're breaking God's heart, whether, whether you have God in, my mind, in your mind or not. That's not okay. If you have no intention of obeying God, that's not okay. If you look at the Word of God and say, this is what God is telling me to do, that's great, but I'm going to do what I want to do. That's not okay. If you are like that, God is saying, you are a liar. And let me tell you, all parents know this, the thing that they hate most about their kids is if they lie. Just be honest. Because if you're honest and you're weak, mom and dad says, I'll help you. But if you lie and you deliberately try to cheat, that's not okay. Because it's not a matter of time or effort. It's a matter of the heart. You know, as we close, we are to supplement our faith and goodness and virtue with knowledge. That's a weird sequence. we are like, shouldn't the knowledge come first? You say faith and then goodness and virtue and then knowledge the problem is that many do not desire to know God they just want salvation they just want to go to heaven get faith and we're good to go no that's just the beginning that's when you started the race now you must supplement that by the desire to be good and then the knowledge of how to be good, to be more like Jesus Christ. Yesterday, we concluded four weeks of seminar on Christian dating. And it was pretty exciting. It was pretty exciting. Well, at least to me, it was very exciting. You know, we discussed that we date someone to find out more about them, to see if we want to have a deeper relationship with that person. It's like me when I first dated my wife. I needed that dating phase so I could propose to, I mean, I need to make up my mind whether I want to devote my entire life, rest of my life to loving her. But when I did that, after the dating phase is over, I got to know her. I knew her enough to know that I do want to spend the rest of my life with her. Now, after that commitment, again, you live every day loving, getting to know more. That every day is not a burden, it's pleasure. Wow. That's why you got married in the first place. That's what makes the marriage happy. You got to know God. And then you took a leap of faith and said, God, I'm going to develop my entire existence to you every single day. You have a desire to be good. I want to be desired. I have a desire to be like you. Now, what do you do? You have to enjoy God every day. You get to know God more and more and love God more and more every single day. Do you have the desire to know God better? Do you have the desire to know God better? What do you desire? I mean, for those of you who are sitting, including the teachers, what do you desire? Some of us are living a double life and we don't even know we're living a double life, do we? We have this ideology okay we have to desire this thing but when we look at our life if somebody took a camera and recorded us for 24 hours by the time you get up to the time you go to sleep will it be matching will your ideology and your life be matching 
you know, I have to catch myself all the time because I'm drifting. Every time I don't think about it, I'm drifting. Here I go drifting again. I want this, I want that. Looking at my 401k, looking at my retirement, looking at my, my kid needs a new computer. I'm look, I just got him a new computer. You know, there's all these things that's preoccupying my, my mind and I'm thinking, you know, where does God fit into all these things? And I have to catch myself. And being a youth pastor actually helps me a lot because I have to. <laughs> I have to spend time in the Word of God every single day to prepare my messages, to prepare my seminars. You know, I have to, I have to pray for you. So when I do that, it's an opportunity to catch myself. You teachers are lucky because because you're teachers, you have the extra opportunity for God so you could catch yourself, hey, I should desire God more. Not, not just anything but to love God. All of you, I want you guys to spend today, this week, thinking about it, catching yourself, what am I desiring? Do I want to know God better? If you do, I have two suggestions for you. Number one, get to know your parents better. How many of you really try to get to know your parents better? Not many kids. I don't think I got, I, I don't think I did that when I was a kid. But when you try to get to know your parents better, for you who's a father out here, you, know, you kid try to make an effort to get to know you better. Wow, that feels great. Wow, my son is asking me questions. Hey, Dad, what do you think about this? What do you like about that? And, and tell me more about yourself. And, you know, wow, my son really loves me. I challenge you this week to get to know your parents better. And you apply that to your life. Use that and say, oh, this is how I should approach God. God, what makes you happy? God, what do you want me to do? What pleases you? Because I want to get to know you more. God, I want to get to know you more. This week, can we all commit to that? Can we all commit to that? All right, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. To our faith, to being a Christian, I want to add, supplement to that. Goodness, Lord, I want to be good. I want to be like you. Because you're the only goodness... And I want to supplement that with knowledge. Knowledge, information about how to, and the knowledge as to personal relationship with you to find out what pleases you, how I could love you better so our relationship could be stronger, so I could be happier, I could be more fulfilled. That these worldly situations, circumstances will not bother me anymore because I'm full with your love. I don't want to be enslaved by sin anymore. I want to be strong. I want to be a strong Christian who's free, who can enjoy life as it was meant to be. And I pray that we will know you better so that we can be that free, Lord. I pray that your Holy Spirit will just come and just, just kindle a fire. No, just a bush fire, bush fire, that it will burn in our heart the desire to know you, Lord. I pray that our youth will take this week to get to know their parents better and to love them more, and that they would apply that to getting to know you better and loving you more. We pray all these things in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. And also, we pray that we thank you, Lord, for, for just keeping us safe and healthy, Lord. Providing everything for us, especially our parents, Lord. Providing the love and the care that we need. And I pray that we would have a thankful heart. That we would have a repentant heart this week, Lord. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.